our whole um, theme um, this week, and I believe for the rest of the year, is about faith. And <laughs> this, this is not me. Somebody, I, I pinched this from somewhere because I thought it was nice. It sounded cute. I'm always after cute sayings. It says, faith hears the inaudible. I don't know where it came from, original. And I'm sure who I'm quoting it from, that wasn't their original thought. But here's what they said. They were looking at what is faith from a biblical standpoint. And it said, faith hears the inaudible. Not even spoken. It's there. It sees the invisible. Affects your vision. It believes the incredible. Those things that you just think, Sister Diana says, you know, write down things. It believes, faith believes the incredible and it receives the impossible. What we hear, what we see, what we believe, and what we receive is impacted by faith. And today we want to have a look at two miracles and see what we can learn and think about faith and how it's operated. Mark chapter 5, here's what Mark gives this account of these two miracles, and they're both healing miracles. It says it's from verse 21, Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him. And he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. We are going to be at the feet of Jesus this week. In a way that we have not been before. In a greater way, in a deeper way. Because... Wherever Jesus is, we are saying, Jesus, I need you to shift my position, and I need you to draw me to you. I remember, oh, it was a few weeks ago, I was praying, and I was just saying to God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for drawing me. Thank you that I'm in your presence. Thank you for that I'm in your presence. It's so wonderful just to be still and to be in your presence. And I kid you not, I could hear the voice of God just saying to me, you didn't just come. I've invited you into my presence. And, you know, it was a perspective, isn't it? That when we come, we must remember it didn't just happen that we had a clever idea to come. God has invited us into his presence. And all we are saying is, yes, Lord. It's a wonderful thing. We can be invited by so many people to so many places, but for God to consider us as individuals and say, come into my presence, spend some time with me, that's a wonderful invitation. So when we saw, so here was Jairus, ruler of the Jews, of, of the synagogue, high person, You'd think he would have no need at all. And some of us may think, oh, I, I don't have any need or, or whatever. But I want you to know that Jesus will meet our needs if we come to him. He said he saw him and he fell at his feet. I pray that we will see Jesus. I pray in the hearts of our imagination this week that we will see Jesus. And it will cause a shift in our positioning. So where we're standing, we'll find our, 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 ourselves at his feet. There's a, a lovely song, at his feet we fall, mighty risen Lord. And that's what we want. Something about when you get into the presence of Jesus, we just want to be there. He fell at his feet. And he fell at his feet and he begged him. So he humbled himself before the Lord, and he begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. There was an urgent need that despite his position, 
he was willing to humble himself before the Lord Jesus Christ and to make his request known. He says, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Some of us have got some urgent needs. He said, come and lay your hands on her. He wasn't in a position to bring her physically to Jesus. And there are some things we won't be in a position to bring physically to Jesus. But when we mention their name and mention the need and say, come, lay your hands on him, her, that she may be healed and she will live. And we want people to live. We want people to live, live in their circumstances, live in their faith live in their workplace. I'm talking about life. In Psalms, I think it's 21, David says, the king has asked one thing of the Lord. He says, I ask life of you, and you gave it to me. And you think he was living, but there was more than just an existence. And we need life, don't we? We need life in our testimonies. We need life. And Jesus is inviting us into his presence this week because he wants to give us life. So that, that was Jairus. It said, so Jesus went with him. Jesus went with him. I'm praying as we go through the scripture, we're stirring up faith and expectation and hope in our hearts. It says, Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. So there were all of these people that is coming around because of one request that was made. Oh my God, that the angels in heaven will be released. Oh, thank you, Jesus, as we make requests of the Lord. But these multitudes that were there, it says, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. So here is Jairus, made his request to God. And there was Jesus about to go, and I can imagine Jairus's heart feeling hopeful now full of expectancy now. And then this woman gets in the way. And so often, isn't it true? We pray and we think, God, oh Lord, you're, you're working. And then something else gets in the way. And it just seems, why do you have to get in the way now? Oh, when the answer to my prayers just seems to be happening. But this woman also had a need. And I want us to know that delayed is not denied. As we pray, you know, so it's, a, it's, a, it, you know, it's a phrase that we use all the time. A delay is not a denial. God is saying to us, this woman had suffered. It said she suffered many things from many physicians. So she had gone everywhere she could go to get healing. And she not only do that, she'd spent every penny she had. And did she get any better? No, she, in fact, she got worse. And how many things in our lives have we tried to solve? And this week of fasting and prayer, we can think about all the things in our lives. And Sister Daniel started us off, it's a good list to start off with. Those things that we, you know, expected those things that we want, things for the future, things that are happening now, that's a good starting point to pray for and pray into. And we often may have done everything that we can. It said, but she didn't get any better. And sometimes we pray and things seem to be worse. And when things get worse, it's easy to be discouraged. We ban discouragement in the name of Jesus. We ban complacency in the name of Jesus because what discouragement does, it causes us to be complacent. Think, oh, what's the point in praying again? You know, I've prayed about this so often. It's not happening. In fact, things seem to get worse. And complacency comes in. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Things may get worse, 
But then she heard about Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So Jesus now is making his presence felt amongst us. And he's saying, you know, TBL, I'm calling you. I'm calling you and I'm inviting you into my presence. I didn't wake up this morning to preach this message. But I just feel that God is wanting those of us who have checked out to check back in. And to know that he has great for us than we could ever imagine, than we can ever dream of. It says that when she heard about Jesus, I'm thanking God this morning that he is the one who knows how to bear our burdens, who knows how to resolve our issues. He's the one who knows us, who has a plan and purpose for us. You know, he knows. So when she heard about him, somebody must have been talking about Jesus for her to have heard about him. And don't underestimate the words that you have spoken, that I have spoken, that I have prayed into the hearts of lives of individuals that we know and that we love, the circumstances that we face. Don't underestimate their impact. She heard about Jesus and she came behind him in the crowd and she touched his garments. We want to touch him this week. We want to touch him this week. If we have never touched him before, we want to say to the Lord, in your presence, Lord, let me touch you. Let something different happen. But you see, she needed to be the one to push forward. Jairus came to Jesus. She reached out to Jesus. And, she, and this is what she said to herself. She said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. This is her hope. Sister Di and, 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 and Brother Pete. This is a hope that God has been, you see, he's been laying some foundations for us. Where is your hope? Has something, has something happened that has, you know, destroyed your hope and your faith in the Lord? You've thought, oh, oh, oh. And, but this woman said to herself, don't forget, she tried everything else. She tried everything else. But she heard about Jesus, said, if, I, if only I may touch his clothes. She didn't say, I may be made well. She said, I shall be made well. There was something about a faith that she had that made a difference. Her faith made her believe the incredible. She was looking at Jesus and saying, well, I've heard that he healed that person over there. Why not me? And I want you, and I think God wants to raise that kind of faith in us, to say, why not me? Why not me, Lord? You've answered it for so-and-so. Why not me, Lord? And to believe what he's able to do and what he will do. It said immediately her faith took action because she did touch his garment. She didn't just think it and didn't do anything. She reached out, she touched it. And he said immediately something happened. And I want to say to us that when we pray in faith, in alignment with the will of God, something will happen. And I'm not talking about the kind of things, you know, the word of faith movement and all that kind of nonsensical things that they're praying. I'm talking scripturally. When we pray, something happens. You may not see it immediately with your eyes, but it says the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Hallelujah. Sometimes we may have to wait for the manifestation, but you've got to pray until something in your spirit says, I've touched God here. 
he's heard this one. Hallelujah. And he said, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, the source of the problem. We want to pray to the source of the problem. <laughs> Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. And she said, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. The working of a miracle. And it says, Jesus immediately knowing in himself the power had gone out of him. Thank you, God. I pray. I pray that this week. As we come before the Lord, not only he will affirm in us, you've touched me. You've touched me. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. And he turned around in the crowd and he says, who touched my clothes? Who touched me? He said in Matthew. Who touched me? Oh, it's me, Lord. It's me again, Lord. Hallelujah. I've got a prayer, Lord, and I need an answer. It's me again, Lord. I've got a problem that I can't mean to solve, and I don't mean to worry you, but Lord, here I am, and I'm facing something new, or perhaps it's just a recurrent thing in a different guise. I need help, Lord, that only comes from you. It's me again, Lord. That song, when you say to the Lord in prayer with a deep earnestness of spirit, who touched my clothes? The disciples were saying, oh, you see the multitude thronging around you and you're saying, who touched me? I want to say to us, as I read this, I don't know how many people are here and how many are online, but I want to say to us, if there are a hundred of us involved in fasting and prayer, over the next week and seeking the face of God, Sister Fiona, God will hear your prayer. Sister Ree, he will hear your prayer. He'll hear my prayer. Brother Patrick, he'll hear your prayer. We are confused by the crowd, but Jesus is not confused. There was a, a throng of people there, yet the woman's touch, he recognized. The disciples were like, Oh, what do you mean who touched you? Look at how many people are there. They hadn't quite yet understood the master of the sea, the problem solver. Hallelujah. The one who can turn adversities around. They didn't get it yet. I want to say to us, don't be put off and think, oh, well, everybody else is fasting, so I don't need to. Everybody else is praying, I don't need to. You need your miracle. And your miracle will impact me because it encourages my faith. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The person that you're praying about will be impacted by your prayer. Don't check out. Jesus looked around to see her who had done this. And she was so full of fear. She was trembling, knowing that what had happened to her and she also came, and what happened? She fell down before him and told him the whole story. Here is a week to tell Jesus the whole story. Not a sanitized version. I often say that to the Lord. I'm telling you a sanitized version again, but you know the truth, you know that, because we, we're used to giving sanitized versions of our experiences to each other because of shame, because of embarrassment, because of all kinds of nonsense, you know, pride. But I, we can be real this week with Jesus. Tell him the whole truth. Oh, thank you, God, because that's what he wants. That's what he wants. And he said... He went on and said, and he said to her, daughter, son, hallelujah, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. There was a miracle that was now about to happen in her life. Her life was now going to be new. What I'm saying is we need to make room for a new thing this coming week. While he was speaking, 
Then others came to him. Poor Jairus was still there. He was still there, hoping. There are many of us Jairuses who are still there, hoping. I want to know that God is going to come through for us. While he's working, Sister Rena, on your miracle, he's about to work on my miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said people came and were saying, oh, don't bother the master. This is verse 35. Your daughter is dead. What's the point? You came and you asked and he was coming, but he got sidetracked. Jesus is never sidetracked. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And he says, why are you troubling me any further? There is no point. We need to say to ourselves, there is no hopeless cases before God as we come to him. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid. You've got to believe. You're going to believe the incredible, and you're going to see what's invisible. And you're going to receive the impossible. And when he came in, he, of course, came to the house, um, Jairus' house. There was a whole lot of people there causing chaos. Don't be distracted by the drama. Whenever we fast, whenever we pray, there's always going to be distractions that comes. Enemy is going to bring all kinds of silly things. And sometimes it's not the enemy. Sometimes it's God. I, I, I keep saying he's peeling the onion skin. <laughs> you know, the onions have got many layers. And some of us, we need to be peeled off. And it's uncomfortable. And we think it's the devil. But actually, it's God making us very vulnerable before him. Yeah. Stripping us back a little bit. But there are always, but the enemy will sometimes use that as a gateway of distraction when we don't know what's going on. When he came in, he said to them, why are you making this commotion? The child isn't dead. The child's sleeping. You see, God is going to give us a new perspective this week. As a church, as individuals, they saw a dead girl. <laughs> Jesus saw a sleeping girl. There's some folks who think, oh, they're so lost. Oh, God, they're so lost. There's no way God's going to do anything with them. Who said so? Who said so? Are we going to now dictate the limits of what God will and can do to individuals? The devil is a liar. Our circumstances that are challenging, who said they can't and won't be better? Are we now gods of our life? God forbid. We serve and we belong to the true and the living God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. They re ridiculed him. He put them all outside. Hallelujah. And God is going to close the door on those who are mocking and all those negative voices that want to speak into our minds. In the name of Jesus, no more. It says he entered in, he took the child and said, Talitha Kumai, I say to you, arise. And that little girl, she got up, she walked, and they were overcome with great amazement. This week, let it be the impact, there be great amazement at the testimonies of what Jesus is going to do for us. So I said to the Lord, what are we going to expect this week? Some of us are going to have a new identity in him. And I prayed and I said to the Lord, let the fullness, let your fullness throw to us. Let us be restored in every area of our lives. Let fear and manipulation that has crowded us and intimidated us, let them be removed in the name of Jesus. Let us be transformed and be the light and salt of the world that he has called us to be. Let us see ourselves as he sees us. 
I said, Lord, grant us new garments of favor. Oh, God, let favor fill this room. Let favor fill every heart. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let us pray that favor will allow us to overcome some of those circumstances that seem to come in our way. Let us favor give us a testimony. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let favor open doors for us. Hallelujah. Let us overcome. Let us be overcomers this week. Let us radiate with favor in our workplaces, wherever we are, that we are walking in a different positioning, aligned with God. New relationships. Pray that new relationships will be developed. We pray that he will give us new and fresh connections, divine connections, would be brought into our path. Some of us, we so need that. Help us to align ourselves with those people who are walking with the Lord who will strengthen us. Some of us, we, we vie for people who are weaker than we are. Not to input and strengthen their lives, because, but because it makes us feel comfortable. They don't challenge us. We need to shift so that those whom are perhaps weaker in their faith than we are, that we become a strength to them and not become a comfort zone. Some soul ties need to be broken in the name of Jesus so that God can release us into new things. I ask the Lord for new acts. These are things that just came to my heart, that we begin to expect to see the Lord divinely intervening in our lives, in every aspect of our lives, with signs, wonders, and miracles as we enter now into a new season, coming out and through his presence. I want to say to us, and it's something that just keeps on everywhere I go, I keep hearing it. So I'm thinking, okay, yes, Lord. You know, some of us have taken a holiday from God. I want to say we cannot take a break from his presence. Okay? Um, at the latest conference, someone was talking to me, and, you know, we were talking about roles and purpose. And sometimes, you know, we were saying, because it's all about transition at the latest conference, and some of us, our roles <laughs> have become our identity. Roles were never meant to be our identity. Purpose is what we are. So when our roles change, it doesn't mean, oh, God, I can just sit down and relax. Thank God. Done my bit. Don't need to do no more. No. Or I don't want to be involved in that anymore. I used to do that. They've taken over from where I was. What happens is we become the pennies that Sister Mapufo many, many years ago explain that we are, we become the pennies in the hand of God. So my role will change, but my purpose, which is to be used by God in wherever he wants me to be, that doesn't change. And some of us, we are being called back into divine purpose. The sound of victory will be upon us. A new anointing and a new authority will be released in us. I would like us, all of us, normally with altar calls, you know, we say whoever has needs. I think that this today, every one of us, including myself, needs to be at this altar. And what we're going to do, we're going to put our hands out like this to the Lord. Whatever you want. And in doing that, we're going to release. We're saying, Lord, here I am. Let my hands represent me, my works, my everything. I say, Lord, I'm releasing to you at the foot of your cross everything that's of the past to my present, all my worries, all my fears, all my everything. And Lord, I want to receive from you what I need, not only for this week, but going forward. In your precious name, because I can't do this without you. So if we can all stand and come to the altar. 
Hallelujah, God, I will. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus.